He kind of looks like Ben Askren. He that does curly look hair. Like that. Boy, I remember watching Bob Ross when I was a kid, man. I'm Zach Schwartz. This is Henry Cejudo, and we're going to do a Bob Ross painting. And you grew up here in Los Angeles? No, I was born here. Oh, you're born here? Yeah, I was raised in Phoenix. In Phoenix, okay, okay. I went to Arizona State, so I knew oh, you no, were in Phoenix oh, okay. for part of it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sun Devil, huh? Yes, sir. Are you trying to distract me from. <laughs> I'm trying to get any job? advantage I can. Oh, I'm already behind. All right, Henry, you're a Golden Glove champ. You are a Pan Am gold medalist, an Olympic gold medalist, and a two-division UFC champion. Do you ever think it's kind of unfair and maybe consider letting other people win something for once? Never. Never. I'm too greedy. <laughs> I love gold. Do you go with double champ or champ champ? I go with triple C. Triple C. I love Olympic that. Olympic champ, flyweight champ, bantamweight champion of the world. Let's get it right. Which one was the biggest when you won it? Probably being, probably winning the, the, winning the Olympics. Winning the Olympics. Yeah, winning the Olympics is... Uh, after you won either the first title for the UFC or the second title, how did life sort of change? Who was the biggest sort of celebrity you heard from? How was that kind of the wave as it kind of washed over you? Which was bigger, the first or the second? Both of those fights have been have have been great, but I think when I beat Demetrius, that felt really uh, that felt really big because he's you know considered the goat, probably one of the greatest of all time. And then I did it in LA at the Staples Center, and then from there, all of a sudden, I went from the average Joe to the world's hottest man. Love that! <laughs> oh my God, I'm so far behind. <laughs> this is just like going back to school all over again. We had our coworkers do this beforehand, and I saw theirs and wanted to roast it, and now I feel horrible <laughs> for even thinking theirs was bad. It's like, I want to apologize. <laughs> Outside of your division, just across the UFC, who's the guy you most want to beat, and, uh, and why is it Colby Covington? I actually like Colby. You do? Yeah. He sort of set the kind of like start. You gotta go, go all in, and yeah, yeah. I kind of, I like, I like the fact with it. I like what he's doing, even though it rows people the wrong way. Yeah, it takes, a, it takes somebody who's gonna capture people's attention. It's like as much as you hate him, <laughs> he'll still watch him. Yeah, oh yeah, <laughs> every time. Just, I'm in a. <laughs> it's like he's using completely different instruments. Yours better be better than mine. Oh, it sure looks it awful. And like, when I say awful, I mean like the trees. I don't even know what he did to do that. Mine just couldn't look any worse. You know what it, you know what it gives I us wanna, too, though? It gives yeah. us another level of respect. For him. For him and what he's done and how he's able to teach. True. Dude, I can't I can't do two things at the same time. At least, no. I mean, I can, but not. I gotta ask, when you're fighting, speaking of doing two things at a time, coaches in the corner yelling at you, how much of that are you really hearing? Zero. Zero. No, not really. It depends. Sometimes you hear it, but uh, sometimes as an athlete, it's it's better for them to uh, understand that I I'm in there. Yeah. You know, because then the, the rival can, can can pick up on it too. Sure, that makes you know, sense. It's a lot, man. It's a lot to it. Like even my last fight, like I could I could you could feel and you can hear your opponent break, man, and it's something very uh, disgusting. It is beautiful. <laughs> You know what I'm saying? Like it's it's uh, it's like that, man. When you hear things like that, when you when you hear like the noise of suffering, yeah, that's when it's time to to have fun and finish them off. How do you know when a guy is done? You show your demeanor. So you see a fight like in the first round, and you see how you see their demeanor, and as time goes on, it changes. Hands come down. Their face, their face uh, changes a little bit. Yeah, their breathing changes. Like it's it's almost like all seven. Uh, senses, their eyes are different, and that's 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 one area where you have to make sure you know that you, that you're calculated in that sense of knowing okay when it's time to, when it's time to fight, when it's time to compete. You had that time in your career where you you uh, lost to Mighty Mouse, and you had a back to back. How did you change things and circle back and know? What kind of went on for you mentally during that time? Because that had to be a low point. It had to be difficult. Oh yeah, I had to had to cut coaches. You had did. To get, had to get rid of people. Yeah. Sort of a life changing time, like, I imagine. Like a boss, and you have to. You have to in the sport. The sport is too crazy for us to to just say this is going to be fine. And yeah, it's 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 okay with the loss. Like no, it's not okay. I'm getting punched in the head. I don't like it when I get punched in my fat head. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, this is not going well. Wow, I thought that tree, I thought that tree was gonna make it. The hard part is it looks good when you first start and then 
It just descends. What do you miss most when you're cutting? Like, what's the food that you're like, you know, there's those days where you oh, obviously pizza. miss everything. What's a good old pizza, man? Good old pizza. A good old enchilada. Good old deep fried burritos. <laughs> <laughs> That sounds so disgusting. Though. No, I love that. <laughs> you love it. <laughs> as far as guys you trained, have trained with, or do train with, who's your favorite and who's your least favorite? Like, there's got to be that guy where you're like, man, every time I have to deal with him in the gym, it's just a nightmare. And the guy that kind of like helps you elevate your game, just but not frightening to deal with. Yeah, no, it's actually, it's funny because the guy that really helps me is sometimes the guy that hurts me too. <laughs> You know, and he has to, happens to be like my main training partner. And so we're supposed to spar hard or easy, and it turns into a freaking full out war. Yeah. After I get done talking to tell him how, how we have to kind of be a little more careful. Yeah. You took a stand for Nick Diaz and some of the kind of BS he's had to deal with in his career. How has that, or how did that impact you? How did he, did he say anything to you after you kind of took the stand? How did that all work? Yeah, he did actually. And that, that actually kind of cost me uh, one of my fights actually when I fought in Vegas. Oh, it did? Yeah, I fought Joe Benavides and uh, a lot of people felt like I could have won that fight if it wasn't for that damn protest. Yeah. So it was a split decision. Loss. And, uh, but no, he's cool. We became good friends, man. We became good friends after that. Every time I see him in Vegas, he always remembers me. And yeah. They seem like very good dudes, both he and his brother. All right, this is the last one. So we want, we, we've done this before with other fighters, but Celebrity Fight Club. Of these celebrities, I'm gonna just name them off. You tell me how quick you think you'd beat them. All right, Drake. 20 seconds. Logan Paul. He's a little tougher than Drake, probably 30. Jake Paul. Same thing. Yeah, same thing. Chuck Norris. Chuck Norris, I don't know man, Chuck Norris is, I think it take me a little bit with him. He was an actual mixed martial artist. Yeah. Uh, maybe second round. Okay. Keanu Reeves. John Wick. Unless he has a background in there, but no, I'll take him out in round one. Yeah, that's what I figured. All right. Well, here it is. These are how our paintings turned out. I, I Mine's horrific, so here we go. Just gonna turn that around. <laughs> <laughs> it's gotta be worse. <laughs> It has to be. It's um, not good is what that is. Let's see. Let's, no, I think I actually. Oh, he's got the tree in there. You got the water thing correct. Damn, you deserve a medal. <laughs> Mine's horrific. I think you... Do you mind signing the corner of that when you get a chance? Wow. It's... <laughs> yeah. I, think, I think my tree probably took yours out. I tried. I got, I got there and then it just fell apart. Yeah, it's hard though. It's really hard. I, th we were set up for failure. They knew. Uh, this is yeah, a pleasure. No, no problem. I'm sorry. I'm sorry it. these turned out. Yeah, it was like yours at least is a tree. I. Um, it was it was nothing like Uncle Uncle Ross, but we're here in this I know we brought shame to Bob Ross, but <laughs> anyway, that's it. Thank you guys. Uh, I'm a talentless hack. Uh, that's why this turned out this way. We do have some very talented people here. So we had our design. One of our graphic designers named Mo design an actual piece of art for you. So you're not leaving here empty-handed. Here it is. Oh, wow, damn, are you kidding the me? The Conqueror. Are you, are you recording this right now? Wow, that is bad. That is so bad. I'm excited, I'm gonna frame this. Yeah. That is so you got some actual art. We're sorry we couldn't send you home with a painting, but yeah, turned out pretty well.